Hello and welcome to the MBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanzo, and well, we're going to be flying solo this week, but that's not going to stop us. So in today's episode review, we are going to review Ponyville Mysteries, issue number 3. In this issue, the Kinema Crusaders investigate an arson at the Ponyville Retirement Village. Oh wow, arson now, is it? So our little, <laughs> our little ponies are going to solve an arson case. Wow. Uh, <clears throat> so first impressions are in order, and well, uh, starting right out of the gate, this was very interesting. Um, we we start off pretty simple with the girls, um, having camp, and then suddenly escalates to fire at the retirement village and from that point on we get to see the cmc's try to solve the mystery and the mystery was pretty okay it the, the way that they solve it was pretty cool and I, I don't know i mean the suspect was kind of obvious if you really pay attention to the whole matter but hey um it's one of those things where if you got no idea it was a mystery <clears throat> So, those are first impressions, so if you guys have not read this comic, pause here and go do so. Welcome back. So, we start off the comic with the CMCs having a campfire on uh, in Sweet Apple Acre. <laughs> Sweet, Apple Ac- uh, Sweet Apple Acres, yes. So, we, we get to see our first appearance of Aunt Holiday and Aunt Lofty. Uh, those are Sweetie, sorry, you know, those are uh, Scootaloo's ants. And they don't look nothing like in the show at all. And uh, I'm just perusing here. Yeah, well, they, they do look the same. They do look the same. Uh, Aunt Lofty is a Pegasus, while Aunt Holiday is an Earth Pony. The main style and colors are a bit different, but still, they do follow the same uh, species. But anywho, uh, Aunt Holiday and Aunt Lofty introduced the girls. Uh, well, they're, uh, what we call this, uh, it's Girl Scouts, but not really. What was it called again? The... Mm, Oh man, I forgot what the organization you call. I'm just gonna call the CMCs, whatever. So the CMCs and friends uh, are having a camp out, and and Holiday and Elf Lofty are introducing them or, or teaching them how to make some yums. And Scootle asks, "What the heck is some yums?" So some yums are a tradition of the uh, Philly guide. Camp out tradition, okay, the Philly guides. All right. So what you do is basically make s'mores, and just add burnt pear onto it, and yum. I'm Apple Bloom would be very angry at this. This is when before she discovered she was half pear. Mm-hmm. So anywho, um, they have their good snacks, their good eats, and after a while they finish camp and. Uh, kill the campfire. Suddenly, Granny Smith pops out and screams, "Fire!" And the girls say that um, there's no fire. We put it out. And Granny Smith just says, "No, no, no. Um, there's fire at the retirement village, and she's asking the CMCs to go investigate." Ooh, so the CMCs are detectives now. Coco, Coco, <laughs> and. It seems like it's not a one-shot thing. Like, um, they're kind of the residential detectives. Okay, cool, cool. So we head to the Ponyville Retirement Center or village. And it seems that the fire has been put out by the firefighters. All the elderly are out of the house and safe. And um, Mayor Mayor ask around like what happened, what's the cause and whatnot. And 
they say it's too soon to um, uh, it's too soon to find the answer. They need to do a bit of investigation. Um, he, uh, well, the fire chief, fire streak says that um, the fire started in the lunch lunch room and uh, they were able to contain it, but it did enough damage that the elderly can't sleep there tonight. Granny Smith says no problem, you can stay at Sweet Apple Acres. And the rest of the elderly kind of say thank you. So, a while later at Sweet Apple Acres, they talk about who could have done it and whatnot. And we see a pony named Sandtrap. Uh, elderly pony has a golf cutie mark and whatnot. And he said that it's filthy rich because he's been eyeing the place to build some kind of fancy hotel and Granny Smith says uh, nah, nah, nah. nothing to be done about it for now you might as well sleep and uh, think about things later and Granny Smith just says like but some pony may want to follow up on it tomorrow hinting to the CMCs that hey this is a lead you might want to check it out Next day, the CMCs go to uh, Filthy Rich's house and they meet up with Diamond Tiara. And Diamond Tiara says that no, my father wouldn't have, wouldn't have done such a vile thing and it wasn't my father, my father was innocent and slams the door on the CMCs. So without any lead, the CMCs go to, well, go, go around and ask, uh, they ask a pony name. Hmm, I'm not sure what's his name. He is a recolor of uh, what's his name here, Mr. Greenhoof. Yes, but anywho, um, Mr. Greenhoof says he didn't see anything suspicious last night, but he did over here. Uh, but he did. He, he just suggested to the girls he might want to look, or they might want to look at Sand Trap a bit closer because he ever since he got there he's been he's done nothing but complain and says that like oh I want to burn the place down blah 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 blah. So with that the girls kind of say that okay that that sounds like a lead. So yeah let, let's go in and let's try to investigate. So it seems that the elderly can head to the retirement village. Uh, it seems that um, one day is enough, I guess. So they head in and they meet up with a pony named uh, Pearly Stitch. An elderly pony and stuff. And when they meet up with her and they go into their, uh, her room, they notice that, oh wow, um, Pearly Stitch used to be a uh, Philly guide and she was one of the original troops. Uh, her troop number was 001, the first in Ponyville. Yo, that's really awesome. And they, they talk about stuff like, oh wow, this is cool. You got a, you got a lot of memorabilia and a lot of stories. And suddenly, Pearly Stitch says, oh wow, um, girls, I, I'm a bit tired. Maybe you can run along now and stuff. So, yeah. Uh, the CMCs say, oh, okay, we understand. So, they head out. And they were pretty impressed. And I, I guess they didn't really get to ask the question about Sandtrap. But no problem. There's some other elderly ponies. So, they went around asking about Sandtrap. Uh, did he do it? Did he not do it? And so on. And there's a reference to some comedian ponies that I, comedians that I don't really remember and whatnot. And well, not really getting a definitive answer. They just walk around and saying that oh, we mean we mean <laughs> we may want to check out the scene of the crime. And before they could go in, the fire marshal says that nobody. Or no pony is allowed in the room. 
<coughs> and uh, there's no really real reason why they can't go in there. I'm guessing. I'm guessing it's not safe. So the CMC is just asked the fire chief. Mm, uh, what's the news on the accident? And he says uh, nothing new to report other than it's mostly definitely was not an accident. Uh, so that's new. So uh, the case, so somebody lit up the place and now they need to investigate who. So they're just um, just, just suggesting ideas and whatnot. And suddenly um, sand trap pops up and says and asks the girls, uh, you've been asking a question about me? And the girls just say that, yeah, we're kind of investigating here. And uh, sand trap says, uh, you, should, you guys should mind your own business and whatnot. And that's pretty sus. So the girls kind of push and push and Sandtrap kind of caves and just says that um, okay I did I, I guess I did say those things once but I, I didn't really uh, mean it it was really difficult at first you know being away and stuff but um, later on this place became my home the other residents were my family and he could never jeopardize losing that so he's he's just a grumpy old man but he's not the what you call this not the um, suspect or he's innocent so the girls kind of have no leads and, and decides to you know what we need to go into the room because We've we've got no leads, we got no evidence, we got nothing. So we just need to get into the room to look for the look for clues, look for clues. And I'm gonna pause here for a bit. I realize I have not talked about what I thought about the comics and stuff. So this is pretty interesting. The setup here is kind of simple. You you got the girls hanging out, having fun. Suddenly, Granny Smith pops up screaming fire. And that's one of those things where, oh, crazy Granny Smith. The girls put out the fire. There's no fire. And then she telling the girls, oh, no, no. Uh, obviously, there's no fire here. The fire is at the retirement village. I need you girls to investigate. And that's pretty cool. Uh, Granny Smith having the utmost confidence in them to solve the mystery. So that's awesome on her. And when we see how things goes, we we build up suspects, we build up clues. Um, Granny Smith telling, sorry, um, Sandtrap here just says like, oh, it could be fancy. He's been eyeing the place, wanting to be a wanting to build a fancy hotel. And Granny Smith telling them, oh, CMCs, why don't you try and follow the lead? And as time goes on, they. They follow one lead and one lead ends. And I think that's kind of, I won't say bad storytelling, but kind of sucks when you got your only lead and it leads nowhere. And you just need to ask the right person just for the follow-up. Like they went to Green Hoof and he just says, oh, look at Sandtrap. And once they talk to Sandtrap, it's done. And from that point on, they got nothing. They got no clue, got no nothing, and the only thing that they can do is head into the forbidden or the locked room because that's the only thing that uh, kind of um, uh, is kind of the what you call this. That's the only thing that they have going for them now. And talking about going for them now, let's head to there. So night falls and the CMCs dress up in. Black camo arm, <laughs> I want to say armor, but it's just black camo suit and hit into the room. They, they did a bit of snooping and then suddenly a guard comes in and, well, didn't spot the CMCs, just, well, um, saying that, okay, it could be his imagination. So 
the CMC is continuing on and they find the spot where there is the fire and the pattern of the fire looks awfully familiar and it looks like campfire like um, somebody built a campfire and it was in a specific area and they notice something or at least Sweetie Belle noticed something sorry, um, Scootaloo noticed something and she says it smells like something and tries and lick it and uh, in this light is kind of terrible because uh, she's the one that licked it but the next panel shows that it was kind of uh, apple bloom so to, this is kind of a error here but anywho um, let's see. we all know it's Kutulu that licks the spot and whatnot <clears throat> so anywho she says that it actually tastes like uh, pickled pear and peanut butter and they say that wait pickled pears I think you've got some uh, some yums on your brain because they had it and some yum was delicious and suddenly uh, they hear someone uh, coming in and well they're not supposed to be there so they lick the split the next day um, Skutulu was is having breakfast with her aunts and she can't she she can't get um the taste out of her mind it's it's the some yum thing like she still can't get it out of her mind because that's the only clue that they have so pickled pears peanut butter like oh man that that's so that's so really off so she talks to aunt holly about it and <clears throat> Uh, let's see. Uh, Aunt Lofty just says, How strange. Uh, didn't Philly Guy used to make some yum out of peanut butter? Ah, yes. So, uh, it seems that one of the old timers, the legends, made some yum with pickled pears and peanut butter instead of pickled pear and chocolate. So, Scootaloo knew knows who did it and uh, rushes to the retirement village with the CMCs and confronts uh, Pearly Stitch. So they ask her, were you the one that started the fire and whatnot? And Scootaloo presents the evidence of they were... Uh, leftovers of pickled pear and peanut butter and according to Aunt Lofty and Aunt Holiday only the only only one of uh, only the original uh, Philly Scout has done that and since you are a Philly Scout you are the prime suspect and and sorry uh, and <laughs> and uh, pearly stitch confess she was the one that made uh, she was the one that did the fire and whatnot and well uh, Mir Mir and the fire chief comes in and says um, you should have told us but pretty stitch was ashamed to admit her mistakes and well no since no <laughs> God since nobody was hurt um, uh, they kind of brush it off because uh, Maymer just tells uh, Pearly Stitch never to do it again and Pearly Stitch says, yeah, she promised not to do it again. Uh, the fire marshal is kind of pee for the CMCs because they were not supposed to go to the crime scene but tell them that, okay, good work on solving the case. Yay, much awesomeness. So, yeah, well, final thoughts, I guess. So, anywho... Uh, on the next page, on the final page, uh, according to this one, it says the following month, they have a special guest, which is Purdy Stitch. 
and she's going to teach them how to make some some yum yums with peanut butter and whatnot and they do some great awesome stuff and yay much awesomeness she she should have been there in the very beginning but anywho with that comic ends and let's head into final thoughts <clears throat> like i mentioned before i like the setup of the comic like i, I like how things progress uh what is strange for me is that each time they progress they lead up to a dead end where conveniently somebody tells them something new and they follow up uh the part where scootaloo licked the what you call this um substance on the floor and shows apple bloom that one was an error like i think that is a crucial error like that is a huge error that might confuse people if they're not really 100% paying attention but overall um it's not bad the story is kind of okay uh this is the first appearance of Aunt Lofty and Aunt Holiday in the comics previously they were mentioned in novels and later on in the show i'm not 100% sure the description in the novels um i i am not 100% sure what they got in the novels but uh having them there is kind of cool yeah other than that yeah man like i i don't know i mean if pearly stitch was a, a philly scout she should have been with them i don't know this is one of those things where how do you determine stuff like ah oh, man it'll be strange just to have a elderly in the girl scout as soon as they say that people are just going to email me and says oh no that's not strange there's elderlies in the girl scout like from senior members and blah 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 i'm sure of it i'm not percent sure don't live in the states so can't really tell but overall um not a bad story uh, it was really interesting and i kind of like it yeah I'm just a bit puzzled or uh, yeah i'm just a bit puzzled that uh pearly stitch didn't get arrested and whatnot because starting a fire i i guess may mayor drop the charges and whatnot and since she's the mayor she can do that i guess so yeah yeah but anywho let's that's the review so if you guys <laughs> sorry so let's wrap things up if you guys at home have any questions concerns or suggestions for the show you can contact us at com. you can also reach us on the twitters the show is at MBS show and my personal twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. and also please subscribe and rate us on iTunes YouTube don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date and stitch radio and also like our Facebook page you can also catch us on com. links are in the show notes if you like support the show you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show with every Support, you get a week's early access to review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank Lucky Knight, Master of Black, and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You are great. So, anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo, and I'll guys catch you next week for another fun episode of the MBS Show. See ya!